Welcome back students and for our last video this week I'm going to talk a little bit about medieval cathedrals and so this is going to be um, another aspect of medieval culture that these rulers promoted. All of these rulers, even Frederick II, who wasn't very popular with the medieval papacy, uh, were expected to fund the building of uh, great churches and beautiful uh, buildings for Christian worship. Now, the initial medieval cathedrals were built in a Romanesque style that you can see in the images on the screen here. Um, the uh, driving um, style of the Romanesque church uh, was to link these churches uh, or to link the worship that took place in these churches with the papacy and with papal leadership. So they're called Romanesque because they imitated the style of the early churches found in Rome. And so this was a way of saying we're practicing the same religion as uh, the papacy. We're following the leadership of the papacy. And architecturally, as you can see in the PowerPoint here, these buildings were designed to be imposing and dignified. Um, they had a very kind of heavy feel to them. And it was designed to say, look, this is um, something important. The most important thing in the world is happening in this building. And you should be aware of how important it is when you enter into uh, the building. And so it's a, a very kind of solemn approach uh, and a solemn culture to these buildings. And that also reflects uh, the influence of monasticism in this culture. Uh, monastic abbeys were also built in this style. Monasticism is supposed to be a simplification of human life, and that's what these early churches reflected as well. In the late 12th century, however, we see a revolution take place, an architectural revolution take place, pioneered uh, by the Parisian abbot, Abbot Suger. Um, Abbot Suger is uh, a leading advisor to the French uh, Capetian monarchy. He's one of the ones that helps them to take better control of their lands and not to be dominated by their local barons. And he pioneers this new style, the Gothic style. And the Gothic style is based on these two technological changes, flying buttresses that you can see here. Uh, these are supports to the walls that extend away from the walls, allow them to be built higher without collapsing in on themselves. Uh, and also uh, to build uh, arches that were pointed, as you can see here, rather than rounded as in the Gothic style. And it was discovered that a pointed arch could sustain more weight, and this would mean you could build a bigger window. And so uh, these two technological changes bigger windows and the taller walls contribute to the architectural culture of Gothic churches. Uh, and that is they emphasize height and light. Height in order to encourage the Christian believers who entered these churches to think of themselves as looking up to heaven or to uniting themselves with God as they entered into these churches. Uh, that's what going into a very tall building or a building with a very tall interior, proportionately a very tall interior, will do. And light to symbolize God. This was seen as the best way that you could uh, show God was through light. It's something that you can't really touch. Uh, it's something that is immaterial, but it's something that's nevertheless uh, life-giving and, and makes things grow. Uh, now, we also know that uh, along with the light, this light would have been filtered through many different uh, colors. And so you can see that in uh, the image that I've zoomed in on here of some of these windows. Uh, so uh, there's a, a sense sometimes to talk about uh, Gothic cathedrals, now I've gone too far back, uh, to talk about Gothic cathedrals as not the way people understood them. Medieval people would have seen these as the brightest and the most exciting and the most vibrant buildings that they would have experienced. Of course, the windows also served another role, and that was to educate a congregation, many of whom were often illiterate. And so the windows were a way of showing people Bible stories, um, other kinds of accounts uh, that they needed to become familiar with uh, in order to learn uh, Christianity. We have one more slide. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is really good. Um, this shows you uh, the height of these Gothic churches. 
And then it also shows you the brightness, the brightness that's even extended to the statues on the outside. Now we tend to think of these statues as being these facades on the outside as being dark and gray. But this was actually something, uh, a development that occurred after the medieval period. Uh, the Renaissance emphasized a sort of simplicity and stripped away a lot of the paint. Uh, but medieval people, this is a study uh, that was done on a cathedral in France, and they discovered traces of pigment that dated from the medieval period, and they kind of reconstructed what it would have looked like in a light show. And you can see the vibrant colors that would have characterized these Gothic cathedrals. And so these Gothic cathedrals, these Gothic churches, they're the products of growing medieval cities rather than monasteries. Uh, although you'll find this style in monastic churches as well, it doesn't come from monasteries. It comes from uh, cities. It requires skills of the community. It requires you to import stone from different places. And so the cathedrals are a product of an increasingly sophisticated and increasingly successful medieval economy that we'll talk about a little bit next week as well. Okay, that's it for week 13, and I'll see you for our last week of material next time.